Welcome back to Nostalgia Pod, your weekly look at what's going on in pop culture. I'm here with Dave Martinson. He's Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> I prefer Taser Face, actually. Ah, oh, dude. T- <laughs> that, the Shout whole out Taser like, Face, man. Yeah, Taser Face. He was just I mean, trying to put, put food on the table, man. You know, but Taser Face, <laughs> what, what, what he lacked in... in uh, brains. Create, yeah, brains, creativity, charm, wit. He had heart. Yeah, he had a lot of heart. And he, he just was not going to give up on that name. I mean, no matter how many times I made fun of him, he just... And it's Rocket like, was brutal, man. Rocket was killing him. <laughs> Which, just before we even get there, it's crazy that that's uh, Bradley Cooper, right? Yeah. He, su- such a good performance. Great, vo- great, great voice range. Yeah. No, it does, does a great job there. Phenomenal. So we're obviously going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Logic put out a new album that Dave made me listen to. I guess he didn't make me listen to it, but I listened to it. Dave listened to it. We have a lot of thoughts. Um, mm. Let's start with something that kind of blew our minds this morning, though. Uh, the Meadows, yes. the festival we went to last year, headlined by Kanye West, who had to end his performance early for a Kim Kardashian uh, what, robbery. Up? Yeah, robbery. In Paris. Yeah. Um, but J. The Cole, The Weeknd, Chance, uh, Kygo, like just a lot. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> a lot of really big artists last year for their first year. Oh, your favorite band, the 1975. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the Meadows. <laughs> Their second year, they dropped their album. They're going to three days, yep. and the headliners. We already knew Gorillas, but uh, that Jay-Z, was the only one we knew. There were some hints. Yeah, Jay Z and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow. I mean, Jay Z, man, they nailed it. Let's go back to Made in America. First yeah. time since uh, 2012 when they started it. Well, yeah, which is his festival, so it makes sense right. that he would show up. But he hasn't. He hasn't been touring in no, a long time. He doesn't tour. Really. He's not in the studio. He doesn't do features. It's been at least four years since the Suit and Tie tour. With... Yeah, Magna Carta Holy Grail tour. Oh, and then the Suit and Tie tour with Timberlake. Yeah, with Timberlake. Yeah. That was, I, that I was actually stadium saw him on that one, too. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the second line is probably, the second and third line is probably where they make most of their money, though. Because, I mean, Jay-Z, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Gorillaz is phenomenal. I mean, just mm-hmm. nailed it. But then they have Future, Nas, Bass Nectar, Weezer, Run the Jewels, LL Cool J, M.I.A., Erica Badu... Foss of the People, Migos, and yeah. Action Bronson. Wow. I mean... Fucking awesome, dude. That's a stellar, like, what, that's... Like, 13 artists right there? Mm-hmm. The, the Migos uh, hints yep. were, were, correct, were correct, as were the Joey Badass hints. Yep, and Weezer, which yep. the, they nailed. I wonder if the, the GOAT one was supposed to be Jay-Z. I don't know. Perhaps, yeah. That makes uh, sense. I don't know. But they also... Uh, have a pretty interesting mix of EDM on this. Very little rock. It's like basically if you're if you're a huge rock fan, you're just coming to see Gorillas and Red, Red Hot Chili Peppers at this point. I mean, Weezer. Weezer eh, I mean, they're okay. I, Didn't people like their last album? Was that last summer? Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know what they released this year. Sounds horrible. So, far, at least in my oh. opinion, very like just too poppy for Weezer. They need to kind of mm. stay in that niche, like indie soft rock. I believe yeah. for them to be successful. That makes sense. Yeah. But. Um, then after them, it's so like TV on the radio, Foss the People, I guess, Ooh. which you can see them literally any fa- I, If I go to this festival, this would be like my fifth time seeing Foss the People. Yeah. And it's impressive. that's four times more than I ever wanted to. <laughs> um, but yeah, the I think the thing that stands out most is the rap on this lineup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you tweeted about it today. Wh- which ones are you most excited for? Because I, I know you're going to go. Of, yeah, definitely going to go. This is, this is really, really strong. Uh, I think just the general old school uh, OG mm-hmm. uh, tilt. Obviously, Jay Z and Nas at the same festival is really impressive. Yeah, uh, Run the Jewels. They're mm-hmm. kind of the new new group, but old school guys, right? Yeah. But then LL Cool J, which definitely have no idea when the last time he ever performed was. He's been an actor for a while now, you know. And It'd be like if Ice Cube came back and just doing every award show. He's exactly. not known to mankind. Um, and then De La Soul, Big Boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, really impressive. Yeah, Ghostface Killer. Yeah, and Ghostface, yeah. Crazy. Um, Wu- yeah, it's weird because Wu- Wu-Tang Clan as the group is going to be at Governor's Ball. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. I mean, Ghostface has always kind of been active, so is Method Man, but right. that's pretty sweet. And then, I mean, there's a lot of nice, you know, young hip-hop guys as well, so really strong. Right. I think De La Soul, once you knew Gorillaz was on this, made yeah. so much sense because you course. know that they're going to show up mm-hmm. with Gorillaz. But... Yeah, it was really impressive to see that, and then they basically went with maybe the, this is like a, a weird way to say it, but maybe the EDM artist with the strongest following, because bass heads are like, 
Yeah. They're like, I, like I the thought, Grateful Dead. I thought people. that was kind of weird. I didn't realize bass nectar was such a big deal. He's huge, man. And like literally, if you're a bass head, you basically follow him all around the country. It's kind of like literally like the Grateful Dead of our generation, which a much weird, worse Grateful weird Dead. Weird thing to say. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, you know, I, I I'm like 50-50 on going to this. I, I really want to, but I just don't know if I'm going to be able to to make it work financially for me right now. Well, you don't want to see Tory Lanes. But if, well, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go for Gorillaz. Like, that's basically yeah. the main reason. Red, Red, I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers. I've seen Jay-Z. I, I have a theory that the way they'll do this is they'll have Gorillaz, and then they'll have, like, Future at the same time, I think, to really split the crowd. That, that'd that be interesting. Something like that, you know? Maybe not Future. It might be too big, but... Yeah, I, I could RTJ, see RTJ, somebody. They'll have some big rap hit. I could see RTJ getting that, yeah. You know? I think that makes sense. And I think it also would just be smart because there's going to be a lot of people that probably don't want to see the Gorillas. Because, I mean, we talked about their album on, uh, what, last week's episode or two weeks mm-hmm. ago? But last week, it just wasn't that, like it wasn't that compelling. Pod. So, yes. No. Stay plugged in. But the thing about the Meadows last year, two days, but basically, if you were one fan... You did this order of stages. You were the other kind of fan. You did this. Like it was yeah. very. There was no. And they were opposite. There so was no know. making like Rolling Loud uh, this past weekend as a hip hop only festival. Mm-hmm. You had choices to make. So right. You know you, you really had to figure it out. But for the Meadows last year, it was just we're going here, we're going there, we're going there, and then oh you're, you're kind of different. You're doing the opposite. Right. Exactly. So. Well, Dave, tell me about Rolling Loud because I know that they live streamed it and you really wanted to go and couldn't I couldn't d- make it. Work. I did. Yeah. So I'm actually happy I didn't go because it seemed to be a, a really rowdy rambunctious crowd really uh, and you know i'm all for getting lit that makes sense but uh i mean yeah but it seemed like a little amateur hour like we had people passing out oh, not geez. hydrating um uh, climbing on fences to get better views mm-hmm. also the stream uh which was done by revolt tv uh there's a few times where people could just stand in the camera shot and i'm like why is this so bush league why are people in your in your, in your stream shot also migos got shut down because the crowd was too rowdy and then moved to a different stage uh, like 45 minutes late. Yep. Little Rosie Vert dro- jumped off like a 20 foot ledge like he was fucking Eddie Vedder. Jesus. And apparently he's fine. Oh, that that's good. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, fucking, there was a fuck Joe button chant at the Yachty show and Yachty was like, just let that old man live. <laughs> Which was, I thought, a great, uh, great way to handle yeah. it. Um, Travis Scott had like an animatronic bird. On, on stage was it like flying around videoing or something no or? just like a big like bird statue thing doing huh weird stuff because you know birds in the trap was his last right. album uh, yeah it looked like it was a, a great time uh, lots of you know people bringing out guys they collaborated with because yeah. everyone was there oh, absolutely so it looked like it went pretty well uh those need to get better organized year after year this is the third year now but the first year got kind of rained out and this is the first year as three days so and it was sold out so it's definitely not going to go away and it's no given the lineup not. they had really exciting so that's i mean that's kind of crazy yeah uh, people like it just yeah rowdy. jumping off stages like i think they were a little feet. lax with uh security pe- patting people down too <laughs> I, th- <laughs> does not surprise me at all um wow that, that does sound really crazy i don't think the medals would be anything like that but no. it, it has i mean pretty comparable hip-hop i mean obviously not as deep because rolling loud was such a specific type of festival so they right. just went all for that genre but mm-hmm. i'd say they probably did about what 50 percent of what Rolling Loud was able to do just in terms of getting yeah. like a, a name like Jay Z is huge, especially because he yeah, hasn't. Of been course, touring. of so, course. Um, why don't we move on though? Because we don't have a lot of time. Before we do, I just want to shout out my boys LC Sound System. Two new they songs. released two new songs. You like them though? I like both of them very much. That's good. Um, Call the police, especially. But uh, American, was there one American? Dream. Yeah, American Dream. Got it's it. uh, nice. it's an interesting one because it's it's like a very basic like waltz sound with like just mm-hmm. like the synth just like slowly building up. Very cool. No album date yet, right? Not, not yet. I'd probably expect it maybe around like July at this point. There's listening. nothing out that far right now. Just, uh, just Haim. Oh, that's so, right, yeah, Haim. Which I don't think they care when Haim drops their album because those fans are. They not. had a second song come out, and again, very poor YouTube traction. I'm very surprised at how they're not promoting these songs. But it's on Spotify. Right. So it's yeah, strange. That that uh, they even said that that one is going to be off the album for sure. So the other one You're right. and and they said that the other one was uh, not on the album, right? Cuz they said this, this one was the first one. Yeah. So good call, Dave. Give me some props there. Uh when we talk about the Blade Runner trailer. 2049. Yeah. I mean, Denny Villeneuve, our guy. 2049. How old will I be then? 49. 50s. 58. Jesus. Old. 
Yeah. Well, if 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 the, if the world changes as much as it looks like in Br- in Blade Runner, we're all in a lot people will be on Mars by then. That'd be cool. Yeah, pretty nice. I'd probably, I'd probably go to Mars. One way trip? Would you do it? Would you march in that ship? I don't know for a one way trip. But well, go. it's gonna be one way trips initially. Right now, yeah. But I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna go initially. That's I'm true. I, I think they'll have one way trips. They want to have one way trips by like the mid 2020s, according yeah. to Elon Musk and stuff. So. What cool does he shit, know? man. What does he know? I don't know. He just funds the most successful private space travel yeah. what venture ever. What does yeah, he, he know? know? Um, um, <laughs> anyway, Blade Runner, Ryan Gosling, yeah. Mans. Looks like he's having a, a, a tough time. You know who doesn't look like he's having a tough time? Jared Leto. Oh. He looks like he's having a great time. I'm happy because <laughs> post Suicide Squad. You know, know. It, it, it's like everyone forgot Dallas Buyers Club happened when he right. won an Oscar. He so like, yeah, that's good. Jared Leto's a good actor. He is a good actor. Even like even as a Joker, he wasn't totally horrible. It's it just was just a weird choice. I feel irritating. Like. Yes, irritating choice. Good good way to put that. So what, what stood out to you about this trailer? Because I think we both think it's pretty dope. Yeah, Denny Villeneuve's cinematography. Every shot looks beautiful. The colors definitely jumped out. It yeah, looked like a awesome dystopian world mm-hmm. just like the original blade runner but now it's in 2017 with a uh, uh, up-and-coming filmmaker well not he's i think he's come up by now a right. uh, acclaimed filmmaker's uh touch really scott's just producing this one so right uh you know denny villeneuve he's we've talked about his movies a lot but he's got what four acclaimed films now and now he hit his now he's got a franchise movie so i think it looks like this is gonna work out dude it looks fucking awesome i mean and i still don't really know what this is the first full length trailer, and we really don't know much about the plot. No, it there's a lot, always good. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff in there. Basically, all you know is what well, Ryan Gosling goes to Harrison Ford and is like, "Hey, I need your yeah. help." And Harrison Ford's just hanging out in his gray T-shirt mm-hmm. in 2049. Flexing. Everybody else is wearing crazy outfits, and he's like, "Hey, I'm still wearing gray tees." Yeah. Just so you know, my style does not change. I'm Harrison Ford now. Yeah, I don't care about no replicants. I'll do what I want. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks it does look very good. Uh, Comes out in October, so. Yeah, big fall movie before uh, Thor and Star Wars. Yeah, that's gonna be a crazy run at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I think I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Dark Tower, though. So you you told me that this is a Stephen King. Uh, yeah, the Dark Tower is a whole series of Stephen King books that are very popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've read about it before, but it's like a it's a dystopian world. There's like time traveler things like where there's like this kind of apocalyptic world there, and they mm-hmm. can time travel or you know, use a portal to get to, like, the modern world, which you kind of see in this trailer. Uh, very popular. It's got a like, huge fan base. But this trailer, uh, I can't speak to how it compares to the books, of course, but it does not do much to incite me as someone who didn't read these books. I actually saw it when, before I saw Guardians. They showed it as mm-hmm. a preview. And then say you were like, hey, did you see that, that Dark Tower trailer? It's like, eh, maybe. And then you were <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it was that one. That, and, like, has yeah. Idris Elba doing weird stuff and with Matthew the guns. Matthew McConaughey uh, looks like a textbook bad guy. Yeah, and for having two big stars like that, I really did not remember the trailer until you brought mm-hmm. it up. So we, that's definitely not a good sign if it's not memorable. This is also our first look at it. The movie comes out this summer, so everyone yeah. was kind of concerned about it. And this is this might be a movie where this the reshoots and the radio silence was probably a bad sign. Reshoots aren't usually a bad thing, but it was like this this movie just had a lot of issues. Is Idris Elba overrated? I don't think he's overrated. I don't. I mean, I think he might be a little overrated. What what bad movies has he been in? Well, this he one hasn't been a star in that many things, to be honest. I guess that that's kind of what I'm I'm saying. I feel like he gets like thrown up there as like I I think it's probably mostly the James Bond talk. He gets yeah. kind of thrown up there as like a big movie star, but he just does a lot of really good voice work. He, I mean, he was Stringer Bell, who's really great in that role. And I mean, he got a lot, of, a lot of love for Luther TV show. That's true too. I've never seen Luther, so I guess I can't speak to that. But I feel like he gets put up in an, in an echelon that he's not quite there yet. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he's been in enough of the roles. We'd have to go through his IMDb. To Beast of No Nation. So. He was good in. Maybe. And maybe. don't forget Thor, man. He's fucking guarding that. That's true. That that portal tube thing. That's high yeah. all. Yeah, he's pretty good. At, in, I mean, he has it's a it's a bit role, right? Yeah. So, it looked like he was actually kicking ass in the Thor trailer, though. He was like chopping people in the woods, like he was Kylo Ren. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, it's so good. they're giving him more to do. The, the Thor trailer continues to be a really great trailer. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Definitely. So, um, moving on, Game of Thrones announced this week that they're going to have four spinoff yeah, shows. Yeah, up to four at least. They've commissioned many writers. So, there's, I mean. We don't really have many other details around it Just right now. They're doing it. So, what would you want to see? Yeah. First, of first take spin-off. of course is that this is obvious. They are gonna use do more Game of Thrones, right? Mm-hmm. Next year is the final season, right? So, they're not gonna let their 
most successful, highest rated show ever go away. And such a rich uh, world from George R. R. Martin, mm-hmm. despite not finishing his world, he's given so much backstory and so much other things. That, yeah, there's tons to do. Uh, well, yeah, what do you think you would do? I, I think I have, there's a bunch of options for me. I think doing like, like a prequel thing would be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, the safe option. Very well, obvious. Actually, shout out Tower of Joy episode aired a year ago today. So happy anniversary to the Tower of Joy episode because it was on my birthday last year. Oh yeah, you so had to rewatch. You it, happy birthday to me, by the way. So I, I need to sneak that in. But <laughs> anyways, um, no days off. Yeah, I I think it'd be interesting to look at like what was going on around that. And so just, like, the Robert's that. Robert's Rebellion. Yeah, I, I suppose they, that'd be they've already cast young Ned Stark. Mm-hmm. If you like that guy, like it is easy. Yeah, might and as well. Young Robert. I mean, that's a. I think that would be really easy for people to latch onto because it's kind of a straightforward conflict. With uh, and you actually get to see like Viserys and like the right. Targaryens at the end. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, that, that was my initial. A younger one. Jamie Lannister. Maybe you keep mm-hmm. Coster Wabo. Yeah, you could definitely. Do Probably, that. you know. Sure. Uh, then that after that, it was hard for me to really think up what I wanted to see because well, that's the only thing most viewers would really. Uh, identify with because mm-hmm. it, it's recent it's like this th- this happened you know a decade right. before or however much long it was before the show actually started everything else is like way back story that only bookheads and you know mm-hmm. big nerds would actually recognize like there's like Aegon's conquest when like, they take over the continent uh, mm-hmm. start of the Targaryen dynasty uh, the dance with dragons where like there's with, tons of dragons that? and stuff uh, it was kind of like the power struggle on the family in the I don't think they would do that yeah like those are like expensive. see that's the thing like, those are exactly anything with tons of dragons just mm-hmm. is not feasible no yeah it's it's funny they they have like what four houses or like four like main houses what the I mean it's a fucked on houses well I guess main like, one. like the it's at this point it's the Targaryens slash Lannisters, Lannisters Starks the Starks Martells yeah, uh, and that's probably the big ones. And there's like the the Tyrells and the other North houses. And yeah, I feel like you could just branch yeah. off and give each one of them their own show if you really wanted to, which I don't I don't foresee them doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be interesting to do the story of the White Walkers. Yeah, like, that would be. A good I, I immediately thought of like the Children of the Forest mm-hmm. for like the old OG like Night's Watch stuff. Yeah. tons of mystical things you could do there. Yeah, I'm not sure what else. I mean, did any other ideas come to mind for you? I think those are the big things. I mean. Doing a Game of Thrones spinoff, you have to, in my my opinion, you have to stick to what is appealing to Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. We have the, the huge throne sets, whether they're book right. readers or not. They don't really count because they're a small amount of the viewing audience that makes us a juggernaut. It's gonna do well. This show is gonna do well regardless. But oh yeah. You don't want to have a Fear the Walking Dead, no. where it's not. I mean, I don't expect something to be critically panned from HBO, especially something that's so important like this. No. But that was rated well, and then it went away because no one really cared. Right. So you have to kind of, I think and I think the appeal with Game of Thrones, of course, is such an intriguing world that sucks you in right away, but also characters. Mm-hmm. And that's probably why Robert's Rebellion is so easy yeah. to do as, as a first spinoff anyway. I would bank on that It's because there's multiple characters we've already seen. Right. And just seeing them younger is like, oh, cool. You know, and the people mm-hmm. we've heard about, like the series, you know. Do you think they'll continue to expand on the story? Do you think they'll go... Like, oh, you mean like after the books? Yeah, like a post-book type show. That's a great question. Um, yeah. Man. man. Because at that Bo- point... Bookheads would be furious. They that, would. They'd be paving new roads when George <laughs> R. still ain't going to finish these books. Oh my right. God, that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, very possible. I, Star Wars doing it. I kind of think they that has to be one of them. Because I can't imagine that it I think, all yeah, goes... That won't be first... But if these no. spinoffs do well, you know, yeah. ten, well, five, would maybe you... ten years later, yeah. seven years later, or however long we go, spinoffs probably will only be will be short amount of seasons. We're sure. not going to go eight seasons with spinoffs. That'll probably happen. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably come out right as George R. R. Martin is releasing the next book. So, yeah. and I'll still have one more book to go. <laughs> <laughs> that that dude, I mean, he wasn't. He, I talked he about it a few weeks handed, ago. The books ain't coming. I'm sorry. He probably never handed a paper on in on time in college. Nah, he always asked for an extension. Yeah, and I'm they were like, got him. "George, it's only a five-page paper," and he's like, "Well, I'm at page twenty-five." He's kept right taking now. F's because he just wanted to finish the paper. <laughs> um, so why don't we move on to logic? Because yeah. let us know if you have any Game of Thrones spin-off yeah. thoughts. Tweet us at Nostalgia Pod and uh, logic thoughts too, which we're gonna get to. Yeah, so logic. Uh, I want to preface this by saying I've listened to some logic singles before, mostly when I'm hanging out with you and you play logic. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty good. I'd never, like, search him out to listen to him, mm-hmm. so I want to preface it with that. 
this was an interesting album to jump into with Logic. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Put it that it's, way. It's like jumping in the Blank Face LP as your first Schoolboy Q album. It's just yeah. a little too dense. Yeah, I was, it, I, I was like immediately just kind of thrown off with how like the first song hallelujah goes from being like a, a rap song to all of a sudden he's dead and talking with neil degrasse tyson who's god so it was very strange mm-hmm. um yeah but moving i guess like moving forward as someone that has been following logic is a big fan of him what were you expecting from this album yeah that's a good question so his last album which came out in the fall of 2015 the mm-hmm. incredible true story was my favorite Logic Project. It was his second album, and he's had a bunch of mixtapes before that. And the reason I liked it so much was because it was a really cool concept album. It was uh, had some sci-fi things about like you know like traveling to the future. And Logic had he had talked about how he wrote like a whole like like transcript or movie script f- for like the theme of this album, right? But it was really thought out. He had his goals, and there was kind of like cool uh, interlude scenes where like there was like talking like skits basically towards the end of songs and the beginning of songs. Um, and it kind of like kept his narrative going. But the important thing was the Credible True Story had individual songs that you could just uh, latch onto and mm-hmm. play and enjoy. Some of them are single, some of them weren't. And I think I want everybody, this new album, to kind of have the same, be in the same boat where I know it's going to have a concept album, but I want there to be songs I can pick out and play, like Kendrick Lamar with DNA or right. Element or mm-hmm. Humble or Loyalty. Yeah, uh, there's, or any there's, song off of the Kendrick exactly. Album. The problem with Logic and Joy Badass, same thing. He has other great songs you can pick out mm-hmm. of his incredibly conceptual album. Logic, this new album, unfortunately, despite its great intentions, does not have that many songs I want to listen to again. No, I mean, probably everybody is, and that was the first single, right? And again, that's the other problem where the best song is the first song he dropped. Yeah, everybody's definitely the most listenable song. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, I, I think... It's not that any of his raps were bad. It's not. I thought a lot of the beats were very complex, but also I think like it's awesome. got great, great instrumental choices. Yes. Whether it's strings, horns, it, it, great ear for that. Yeah. But just in the way it was constructed, and like the way that they were basically saying this is going to be a statement as a whole, instead yeah. of just like each song is going to tell like its own kind of story, just makes it the kind of thing where you can't just jump into it. Yeah. And that made it a little hard to get through, not going to lie. Um, oh, no. I skipped through a couple of songs when it started getting a little long. Like, they're, they're, these are long songs, six-minute rap songs. Are yeah, really yeah it, it's what? A, it's a 70-minute album with only 12, 13 songs? Yeah. So, yeah, long long songs for sure. Uh, but, yeah, like, like like you said, like I think at its worst, it's, it's preachy. Mm-hmm. But I think my major problem with his concept is Kendrick... That's a really personal album about race and stuff. Mm-hmm. Joy Badass. That's a really big picture album about race and stuff. Right. You know, ri- macro, micro. Yeah, contemporary events, things like that. Right. Trump, etc. They're not throwing out solutions, but at least they have a scope. Mm-hmm. Logic scope is so fucking broad on this that it's like, let's be good to each other. Diversity's good. Mm-hmm. That, that, he doesn't say anything on this album. <laughs> I, 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 like, be good to each other. Like, he talks about how hard it is for like, him. Don't like walk walk in someone else's shoes before you right. prejudice someone. It's like it's just it's just preaching. And like, yes, I know you're biracial. I thought about this before. And he's, I mean, even back to his mixtape days, he's, in, in, you know, had his mm-hmm. brought his personal life experience into his music excellently. But on this, it just seems like he just has a such a basic concept, and it, it's well intentioned. Right. It's, it's still a good message. But I just don't think it's deep enough to, to, to hit, especially when there's not that many songs I want to hear again. Yeah, it's a broad concept that's delivered from sh- such a specific space. Yeah. Like, uh, obviously, he talks a lot about his own issues with race. Um, he is biracial. Um, he, I, on the song, Take It Back, he actually has, like, the last three minutes where he's just telling his life story, basically, from mm-hmm. the time he was born. He kind of, like, lays it all out. And I, I kind of take that as, like, the direction he kind of delivers us all from it's like mm-hmm. i grew up you know mixed race my mom hated me because yeah. i was half black but that was her son and he looks white right and looks. then he's like i'd go to school and people would say i'm white but i say i'm black and i, I get it yeah, but exactly. at the same time it's like i don't really understand what the purpose of taking such a broad angle was like you could you could speak to that experience and mm-hmm. it's very specific and still like be successful in delivering a listenable album. Yeah, and 
Also, I don't think his skits add much to it. That it's kind of weird. Dude, I was, and also super freaking long. Yeah, I was really worried. I thought every song was gonna have a skit in it after the first song, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this is gonna be. Really and that's gonna, hard to the incredible true story. Had like you wouldn't even call them skits. It's so much like the outro of a song for fifteen seconds mm-hmm. kept that little uh, narrative through line going, and it, it was cool. I liked it. It really set a vibe for the album. Right. But for this, it's just distracting. It kills. There's no uh, like momentum or. Uh, pacing for the album yeah and the last song uh 12 minutes long africarian which was the uh, original title for the album which i'm glad i changed it because that would just been yeah incendiary for an unnecessary mm-hmm. reason given his intentions neil degrasse tyson's on it again and then it has like a ghost j cole feature at the end which like norm like j cole these days is slow and doesn't <laughs> add anything and, I'm, and like like i was texting with my friends i was like logic pulled a cole on us like he just got yeah. mad preaching and didn't really do anything good on the album. He started folding clothes, man. First of all, uh, side note, his first album was called The Incredible True Story? His first album's called Under Pressure. Second album's The Incredible Second. True Story. And is it ever acronym to tits? No, it's Incredible uh, the, True the Story. Incredible True. Yeah, yeah, that's the acronym. Wow, yeah. interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I need to listen to that album now. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic album. Yeah, I saw you tweeting about that uh, when you were kind of giving some of your thoughts yeah. directly after listening, how you thought after that that album, kind of like the sky's the limit for Logic, and mm-hmm. he kind of hit a ceiling he didn't need to on this by kind of pigeon, pigeonholing himself with the concept. And, and, and one of the, th- like, I mean, he has a song Killer Mike. Yeah. Except Killer Mike does an outro on the song. Yeah, and he's not, not, a real not even rapping. He's Super like, disappointed. It's spoken word. Uh, there's a song called America with Black Thought from the Roots, mm-hmm. Chuck D, and No ID. Which sounds a lot like Fade. That if song also is kind of boring. It is. Like, which... Black Thought is super... Uh, or uh, Chuck, uh, uh, Chuck D is super uh, spoken wordy again. Mm-hmm. And No ID, a legendary producer, is rapping at the end. What? No also, ID. he has Ansel Elgort doing some singing, which he's an actor. So, like, And I'm like, this is just a half-bit Sean Mendes right now. Right. Um, and yeah. also, I, he's got a he's got a, a weird voice, like a, it's unique at least. He only has like one single out there. So I don't know. That was a weird play as well. I th- I kind of thought all of the like features on this were kind of strange in different ways. I mean, like when I saw the Killer Mike song, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. And yeah. Cause like, cause Logic, he never has his own flow, but he has a really good. He can adapt other flows. Like mm-hmm. he's pulled a lot from Drake and Kendrick recently. Right. And I was like, oh, this will be an awesome song. Maybe him and Killer Mike go back and forth. I know, I'm really disappointed. This song "Ink Blot" with Juicy J, which I thought Juicy J was kind of, kind of like I banged my head at that song a little bit. Yeah. But it's so disjointed because like yeah. him and Lot, it doesn't make any sense. And my my final takeaway is Black Spider Man, which was mm-hmm. the second song released with a yeah. video, nice message, until the end. The video didn't have this part. At the end, there's like a skit thing, mm-hmm. or like the kid, yeah. the kid who dies, where he talks to Neil. Adam. He's talking, yeah, Adam. He's talking about how, uh, yeah, Spider Man should be black. And Superman should be black, yeah, and all that stuff. And I'm like, that is the most tone deaf thing ever. Because yeah. whenever they make um, a new character like Black Iron Man or female Thor, mm-hmm. specifically uh, when it's uh, a black character, black community gets mad. They don't want you to just make the other the white character no. black. They want their own original character new to be worth caring about, and they happen to be black. Right. That's why Black Panther is cool. So yeah. I think that is a really tone deaf thing, and I know it's it's simple. It's at the end of the album. But I was like, wow, that makes no sense. Like that to- That's really contradictory. It's, it's definitely disappointing for an artist who I think has like a lot of, I don't want to say like underground love, because I think he's pretty popular at this point, but he's not if, as big as... If Logic was around 10 years ago, he'd be a backpack rapper. He yeah. wouldn't have any fame, but now he's on Def Jam and mm-hmm. with streaming, and he's got a lot of fans. But you're right, he could be bigger. Yeah, he could. And that, I, I can't knock his ambition, though. Like I think it's a really... I, I like the direction he's going, but he just needs to kind of hone it in a little bit. The thing I'm interested in is he told uh, Genius in a video that his next album will be his last because he's kind of had this whole like s- through line with his albums, and he said he'll probably still be in the hip hop scene, of course. But I don't know. I'd be last interested to see wh- how he concludes. Next with, album will be his last. His last album because uh, he'll be done. He? He'll be done making albums. He's like 27, I think. So was he going to just release playlists now, like Drake? I think he might want to move into other stuff. And still be in hip hop, maybe features or tapes once in a while. But he puts a lot of thought and work in his albums, so maybe he'll be like, "Yeah, well, I'll be done making albums." The way he put it. So gotcha. interesting, at least for his future. I'm not down on Logic, right. but I'm down on this album. Huh. Did really well in sales, though. 
two twenty five to two forty thousand right now. That's not bad. One fifty five, one sixty six uh, traditional pure mm. sales. So he he is his biggest album yet. So good for him. Yeah, that is good. He's I guess he is blowing up even if this isn't his best effort. Uh, well, I'm move on to Guardians though. Yeah. Um, because this was what like the third movie I've seen in theaters this year. I haven't seen I haven't seen many. Uh, was, I mean, I've been seeing it done. It was a lot of fun. Speaking of sales, one hundred forty-six yeah. and a half million domestic, blowing up. It premiered worldwide a week ago, so it's up to four thirty-one and a half right now. So we're on its way to being another billion-dollar yeah. smash for Marvel. Good mm-hmm. on them. Yeah, and did you see the, all the posters that were rip, uh, I say ripping off, but I guess like paying homage to like uh, movies from the eighties. So there was the uh, oh, I didn't uh, didn't a New this. Hope trailer where, or maybe it was a Return. I can't remember which one it was, but it had like Star Lord in the middle, like shooting a beam up into the that's sky. That's New Hope. And, like, yeah, it, it's in it my was, living like, room. New Hope one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then um, they also did a Goonies one where it was like oh, Star Lord was holding on, and like someone was holding on to him. It was it that's was cool. pretty cool. That's they cool. they've hit all the right notes in terms of marketing, yep. in terms of like music choices, like everything around this. Like yeah, I forget what song it was, but there was a song in one of the trailers that's not in the movie. But James Gunn uh, actually tweeted that. He had told them to use that song because he didn't like the one they had picked, even mm-hmm. though it was never going to be in the movie. Interesting. So, yeah, I think James Gunn's stamp is all over the, oh, the, yeah. these first two movies. And Absolutely. I, I really like that he gets to have his own identity as a filmmaker in, yeah. in, in the Marvel machine, you know? Well, and they're even starting to kind of take that over into Thor, it seems like. Exactly. They're really taking that, like, I mean, the same tone. The Thor Ragnarok uh, title is yeah. very 80s. Uh, you know, like graphics. Mm-hmm. So, and judging by the vibe from the trailer, yeah, we're, I think they're going to have some Guardians vibes, and for good oh, reason, definitely. given this movie. Yeah, and especially with, I think, Thor and, um, you know, when you're doing a movie with Thor and Hulk. the Hulk, it's, you kind of need to make it a little bit more fun because those characters in and of themselves, I mean, they have, like, moments where they're really mm-hmm. funny, but I don't think they can, like, all the Thor movies kind of fell flat for me. Exactly, yeah. They have to so, do Thor a little differently because yeah. the first ones were middling. Exactly. So I guess why don't we start just with uh, general thoughts from this movie. I think it's probably one of the stronger uh, Marvel sequels. Mm-hmm. Um, and I liked it a lot. I think there's a lot of good character moments. Um, musical cues are as good as ever. Yeah. Um, I thought yeah. the musical cues it's were fun. spot on, there's which... Some- yeah, it's cool. Um, the, like a little George Harrison in there, which yeah, is really nice. The opening scene had, uh, was it Mr. Blue Sky by yep. ELO, mm-hmm. which was great. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the longest time, I thought that was a Beatles song. I know that's I, it's I pretty common, that. like uh, Beatles-esque. I, yeah, I can but. see that. Basically, everybody in the 80s tried to copy the Beatles in some way, I feel mm-hmm. like. Um, so we're going to talk about spoilers. So yeah. if you didn't see Guardians yet, bookmark this and come back later, because we'll still be here. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. Absolutely. And uh, listen, while, while you're waiting, go to SoundCloud.com slash NostalgiaPod and listen to all of our other podcasts. And hit us a subscription on YouTube. Subscribe, please. Like, comment, share with a friend. Thanks. You're great. So there were a couple things I thought this movie could have done better. I didn't think it was paced very well. Um, it's a little all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> which is interesting because it's still pretty small in scope, which I think yeah. was a positive. It definitely was a positive, but it, I was talking with Sean McKenna, who I went to the movie with. Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. <laughs> he was like... We got, like, halfway through the movie, and we yes. hadn't done anything. And I was yes. like, yeah, that's true. And then it all came together very quickly. Yeah. And I went from zero to 100. Yeah, I think, when you think about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, you have to, obviously, go back to the first one. And remember, the first one, no one, besides fucking A1 nerds, mm-hmm. gave a fuck about these characters. Because no one knew who they were. Right. It was an August Marvel movie. This was their first chance since Thor, really. Mm-hmm. And... It worked. They made us care about these characters that we had no knowledge of. Right. And left us wanting more. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 gives us more. But the, thing, the reason I think it's such a strong sequel is this isn't just Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron is literally more Avengers, but doesn't work as well this time because right. it didn't really change anything. Mm-hmm. It's still fun to look at, you know? Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is all characters, like mm-hmm. you said, almost to a fault because yeah. there's very little plot. Yeah. It, it, but it's it, enriching the characters we've already met more than anything. Yeah, and I think some of those things fell flat, and but some really hit. Like I thought everything with Star Lord, and especially like around like the dad stuff, mm-hmm. I thought hit a lot of really good emotional tones. I, I mean, know by the end, a lot of people in the theater were crying. Yeah, and this movie's doing really well with like adopted kids mm-hmm. and uh, anyone who didn't have like a traditional nuclear family. So yeah. I think that's awesome because the first one, uh, Drax, really spoke to uh, autistic kids and yep. people on the spectrum. You know, definitely who didn't understand, don't understand metaphors and right. social cues like that. Uh, so, which, which continued yeah. in this like 
I think almost to like an annoying point where I just kind of wanted him to be like, all right, Drax, like chill out for just a little yeah. Bit. So I think I think Drax his character is growing because I think yeah. he's becoming more normal. But yeah, the, the humor of these movies, I think through two, as we see that they're kind of they're gonna badger you with a lot of jokes. Yeah, some of them will be awesome, some of them will fall flat, or some mm-hmm. of them will get too old. But that's just kind of the style they go. Yeah, and because they do so many jokes, I don't think it ever lingers too long. Right, but that's just kind of how they go. So yeah, yeah. Like yeah, we could use maybe one less of those kind of draft yeah. jokes, but uh, about mantis or something. But not 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 a horrible. Right, I think that's just a style. They're committed to point. that's the way they go about it. Right. so it's okay with me. What do you think of uh, the stuff between Nebula and Gamora? I see. I like that again. I think so. They they built up uh, well continued Star Lord's uh, question mm-hmm. as dad, obviously to resolution right. with Kurt Russell. They continue to develop the relationship Star Lord had with Yondu. Which I wasn't actually sure how much Yondu we were going to get, uh, mm-hmm. given his role in the first movie. Right. And then, yeah, Nebula and Gamora, we knew they were sisters. We knew mm-hmm. they were the daughters of Thanos, and that's really all we knew. And Gamora was probably the least developed of the Guardians in the oh, first movie, yeah, I'd say. Definitely. I mean, Groot Gru doesn't count, right. really. <laughs> Groot is a tree. Um, <laughs> and also, Nebula was someone people didn't really care about. She just kind of did some action-y stuff and was all mean. Yeah. Didn't she just show up and they basically just like, beat her up? Yeah, they, did, they had a fight at the end and yeah. uh, a few other things. Uh, she had a Thanos scene. It, it was interesting to hear the backstory and kind of how the relationship developed, but I really felt like the emotion, the like the emotionality, mm-hmm. I guess, of the scenes really didn't hit for me. And I'm not sure if that's... Well, I don't think it hit for me either. Yeah. There was more emotional things. Yeah. I think it was just kind of more just, they had to develop more. I like how they kind of doubled down the characters they already right. have. I also thought the stuff with Rocket was a little hard to get into, especially when it was like him and Yondu like, connecting. I was like... Mm-hmm. Eh, not, that's not necessarily hitting for me, but I, it may. I understood, you know, that they were trying to like give these characters some depth because this is a huge money maker for them, as you can see. And what's going to drive that forward, like we talked about Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. is going to be characters. It's right. not going to be the plot because the plot's going to be the same every time, pretty much. Right. I um, mean, unless they are able to establish this as like some sort of like Star Wars esque thing, where eventually the Guardians will lose. Which I don't know. Maybe that will happen. In doesn't happen. Wars. That doesn't happen. It definitely happen in the first Infinity War. Right. I think. So, I think Thanos kicks hella ass in the first one. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Yeah, uh, dude. Uh, we we should definitely check it back in with like the Marvel versus DC like plans and see like where, where those are at because right, it's gonna be interesting. Well, but, as this movie uh, shows, as the movie goes on to the post credits, Marvel is so into the damn rabbit hole because they're so damn successful that they can bring in whatever character they fucking want now and it's so awesome because it works yeah man uh sylvester stallone plays uh stakar who was the uh, who played starhawk he was basically the original uh star lord and then uh michael rosenbaum ving rames michelle yeo and the voice of miley cyrus are all those other ravagers at the yeah. end and that whole crew was the original guardians that was an awesome callback because the team we know from the movies was actually a second generation of the Guardians in the comics. Right. Very complicated because, again, no one really gave a fuck with the Guardians. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a, such a cool callback to canonize them as the, these new Ravagers. And um, Aisha, at, in the, that post credit scene, the, the gold chick, Oh yeah. she creates Adam Warlock, who's this really important cosmic character who actually is Star-Lord's dad in the comics, but also very integral to Thanos. So, like, they're fucking going for it, man. Well, and, and that was, like, the really interesting thing. I felt like that was such a weird, like, subplot or, like, un- under, like, running theme of, like, uh, that, what was that girl thing you just said? Aisha. Old one? Aisha Elizabeth yeah. DeBecky plays her. Yeah. And she's been in a couple of big movies recently. Yeah, she was in uh, Man From U.N.C.L.E. as yeah. the bad guy. She's also in, uh, um... She's in something else. Great Gatsby. Yes, yeah. Um, but I-, I thought that was so weird how basically, like, that little interaction at the beginning was, like, driving the whole plot, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a little abrupt. Yeah, but, I mean, at the same time, it's kind of cool that, like, those people are going to continue to be part of it. It's yeah. not like they're just, like, a one-off. And, like, yeah, like, they're kind of, like, like really, like, these noble people, but they're also kind of, like, bumbling idiots because mm-hmm. they were really inept with their their ships and, uh, like, the red carpet Yeah, like, Thanos. rolling the thing out. Um, but the fact that they're going to stick around because of the Thanos connection with Adam Warlock... Mm-hmm. is cool and uh james gunn will be back for guardians 3 which i think is great yeah absolutely uh, the fact he's gonna have he'll complete a trilogy and they said that this can take place guardians 3 will take place after both uh infinity war movies awesome so like, they have this he, he keeps referring to the cosmic universe so they're kind of they have this own marvel shit that they're just getting weird mm-hmm. and i think there's opportunities for it to get a lot different and uh captain marvel brie larson is definitely going to connect with them yeah so uh that's, be- that's really cool yeah, there, there's a lot of great stuff going on for Marvel, and 
we've talked about it before, so we don't need to like belabor the point, but they've mm-hmm. put in the groundwork on this so that they can start to have these cool moments exactly. and build these kind of, um, I don't even know what the word is for them. movies, uh, franchises, I guess. Yep. Um, this is always an unfair question, but better or worse than the first one? Yeah, it is. That it's a tough one. Um, I think I like the first one more, but I still like this one a lot. I think because this one is so character focused more than anything. Because mm-hmm. like, I mean, Kurt Russell as the primary villain in mm. Guardians Two. Yeah, we haven't even talked about him. His yet. um, his bad guy plot is kind of stereotypical. Like, I'm gonna take over the galaxy or something. But because it doesn't actually get that far, and it never gets bogged down in that, they kind of like bury the lead with the whole bad guy plot. Right. Because it's so focused on the characters, I don't even think it matters. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like Civil War, where uh, Zemo was that bad guy, but he was really just a catalyst for all the the fighting between right. the, the Avengers, right? Yeah. So Zemo, I didn't even know that guy's name. <laughs> yeah, uh, was, was he? That, da- was Daniel Bruhl plays him, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the, see, the first one didn't give us any origins for the characters. It just gave us the origin of the team. Right. And this one develops more of the characters. Yeah, like a slight origin of Star Lord. Yeah, really just presenting the questions, a lot of which were answered right. in this movie. Yeah. So I think you really have to kind of have that context when you think about mm-hmm. these two movies together. But I think from a pure enjoyment, the first one, especially the first time you see it, just because of the, the whole unknownness, mm-hmm. it's fun. But the sequel was not uh, stale. No, like not Like Ultron no. quickly became. Before I give my take on that, just one question. Why did uh, Ego have to tell Star-Lord that he put the tumor in, the mo- in his mom's brain? Like, he could have literally left that part out and everything would have been fine. What's his him. name? Ego. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't care. Which also, like, another tip, like, if your dad's name is Ego, you probably shouldn't, like, trust him. Ego living planet. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I think I like the first one more, but I, I do I did think this one was successful. I'd probably give it, like, a B plus. Right. Um, I, I liked Kurt Russell's Ego as a bad guy more than Lee Pace's Ronin. Yeah. Right? A- absolutely. Because he's definitely a more important yeah. character. But in, I also think um, Kurt Russell is getting to the stage in his life where he could either be Santa Claus or, like, Father Christmas. Or like, you know, uh, Christmas present in Scrooge. Yeah. Like, he basically is that guy all the time anyway. Listen to... Uh, he's in Fast and Furious now as Mr. Yeah. Nobody. Just shows up. When does Beast Kurt Russell. And he has a great <laughs> laugh. Like, such a great laugh. Yep. Uh, very happy person. Um, yeah, so uh, I think Guardians is... Probably one of the best franchises in Marvel at this point, just Definitely. because it takes on it's a really, fun. yeah, it's a fun movie going experience, but that can also hit some really important emotional. Yeah, like, the emotional fact that it can emotions. speak to so many different groups of people, yeah, shouldn't be understated. No, you know, not at all. Uh, but we'll probably wrap it up there for this week. Yeah. Uh, another nostalgia pod in the books. This is what sixty one, two, sixty two, jeez, sixty nine coming up. Yeah. Stay tuned. Give us some ideas for that one. Yeah, at Nostalgia Pie on Twitter. Let we'll us know. to do some weird shit. Just, uh, we'll talk about some weird shit. Put it that way. Um, if you want to give us a follow on Twitter, at Nostalgia Pod, yep. go to SoundCloud.com slash Nostalgia Pod, subscribe on YouTube. Link, link to the YouTube, link to the Spotify, right there at SoundCloud. Yeah. And give us an iTunes review, if possible. Share us with yeah. friends, family. They say to call it Apple Podcasts now. But it's also still called iTunes, so we're going to keep calling it iTunes. Yeah, I am not calling it Apple Podcasts. <laughs> um, if you have any suggestions for what you want us to talk about coming up, let us know. I don't know what's going on this week. Maybe we should check in on Saul. We haven't talked about Better Call Saul. You muy, said it's, it's muy bien. I know. I, yes. need, I need to catch up. So um, We got Saul. We got Paramore album on Friday. Oh, I really? Think. After Laughter, the 12th, right? Wow. Yeah. Um, XXL Freshman. We got to talk about that before June. There's a lot going on. We'll, we'll I, I gotta play that game where I ask you if these are real rapper names or not. That that's a lot of fun. I was listening to one T Grizzly. Is that somebody? T Grizzly. He's I, got a f- song with Yachty called "From the D to the A." Yes, and I was listening to that, but it just came on my Spotify like randomly, right. and I was like, I recognize his voice, but I don't think this is the person's name because and he I, must not be named. Recommended in your car two weekends ago. Really? His other song, uh, fr- First Day Out or something. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Fear Call. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well. uh... Shout out to all our Nostalgia Pod fans. We had a good episode last week. Oh, and, yeah. uh, Girls review. Anyone. Check it out if you missed it. Yeah, and uh, you should definitely check it out if you're going to the Meadows. Give us your thoughts on the lineup. And subscribe right there. All right, we love you.